Hello, beautiful angels. I welcome you to this video today when we're going to be talking about this profound subject that has been, you know, under the scrutiny and the degradation on so many levels um, in our world today. And I'm just really excited. I've been receiving such beautiful transmissions over the last 24 hours since I decided to open this live stream today. And so I'm just really excited to be here with you guys. Um, just editing my little tech uh, setting here for one moment and we're going to get started. So hi to everyone that is here live. I do apologize for the timing of this live stream today. I wanted to get it out today. And of course, you know, many will get to watch this as a replay. So I want to welcome you into this masterclass on the original twin union Hieroscamos mysteries. It is truly the most profound honor to open this space and discussion today to, you know, really honor and venerate and just hold sacred these original teachings, um, perhaps the most sacred mysteries of all, which is that of the eternal love of our mother, father, God. You guys, this is the sauce. There's a reason why it is so magnetic, why people are so drawn to this concept, why people are so fervently um, wanting to pursue this concept, even though so much of it is so distorted and degraded and you know, no longer holding these uh, frequencies of sacredness and sanctity and eternal love at its core, even though this original frequency has all but been lost, there's a reason why people are so obsessed with this idea. And the reason is this is truly the sauce. Okay, so as we open our class today, I just want to bring us into the space of peace and reverence and just really understand that this isn't another spiritual YouTube video that we're going to consume and just be entertained by. This video is truly profound. And if you open your heart and listen with your soul, I truly believe that it can change your life because this frequency has absolutely changed mine in every single way. And it's not even that, you know, I would like for you guys to respect me. It's not me at all. I am just an oracle and it's kind of my job to create this sacred space around things that are truly sacred. And so as we approach this conversation, as we open ourselves to receive this remembrance, it has so much to do with who you really are, your destiny, your core soul essence, and how you were always meant to live in union and be nourished by a specific frequency of love. That is only experienced when you are in union with the cosmos, with Mother, Father, God, with all that is. We were never meant to live severed from that force. And so much trauma has incurred from us being in this world, experiencing the illusions of that separation. And so I'm just communicating to your body, to your spirit, that the more you open and come into stillness, come into reverence to truly receive what is here for you, it has the potential to absolutely change your life because love is the greatest force of healing. Love breaks all spells. I'm talking about this true love. And so whatever pain, whatever misfortune, whatever conflict we're facing in our life, this frequency, as we come into union with this frequency, it has the potential to correct and heal and lift you up and out of any of those things and transform your life and put you onto this path of your soul's highest destiny. But in order for that to happen, you know, we really have to open ourselves up to be able to receive. This is why the world keeps us busy, keeps us in our mind. So we don't ever just come into the stillness to be present with the eternal, with the love that is always here. And so I am so humbled and in awe just to receive and be absolutely blessed by the love of God. I've been in this frequency for the last day, just moving me to tears because this is the energy. This is the true love story that is wanting to be told. We think about all the ways that Yeshua and Mary and, you know, love is being portrayed in our world today. There is an agenda to obliterate and annihilate 
any remembrance of who we really are and the core essence of this true love. And so in order for us to truly remember, we need to create this space. And when we do, right, we create these opportunities to be absolutely blessed and filled up by the love of God. And of course, we can do this in any moment. In every now moment, we can create a space to come into union and be blessed by that frequency. And how often in our life are we really coming into stillness just to be fully open and fully humble and fully empty and fully receptive to the magnificence and the holiness of life. And this is one of those moments. I'm calling forth one of those moments for us here now. And as an angelic starseed, as one of the 144,000, as one that is called to the original mysteries of divine union, of ascension, of being of service to humanity, of fulfilling the prophecy of heaven on earth, this video will activate your soul's remembrance and change your life forever. If you can hear with the mind beyond your mind and listen with the heart of your soul. So... This is really the space that this concept that we're talking about deserves, right? Creating a space of temple because we're coming into union, into touch with the greatest love story of all creation. This is the greatest twin union of our mother, father, God. And it's this love of our mother, father, God that gives rise to this eternal creation that resounds with this frequency of love. And once you can really grasp that, the profoundness that there is a frequency of God that we can connect to through our body, through our heart, through our consciousness that moves us into a place of eternal peace. Once we understand that this is the most profound inner connection we can have with God, then you can understand why there is so much misinformation, distortion, degradation, um, not only around twin flames, but around the subject of God and religion, right? We understand that there's been so much distortion, you know, oh, God is masculine, God is feminine, God is this tyrannical, judgmental, jealous force that is there to condemn you to an eternity in hell, right? These misunderstandings of the true frequency and memory of God is the one and the same as the agenda that is attempting to annihilate the original twin union mysteries. And what we have to understand is that the star seeds, the true angelic star seeds, and the reason why I've been discerning between, you know, just saying the word star seed and angelic star seed is because, you know, even as beings from other dimensions, you can have different intentions for your life. You can have a different purpose. And so the specific group of star seeds that I am here to work with are those who carry this remembrance of love for God and are here to carry out a mission, here to fulfill a purpose that has to do with the restoration of the earth back into its original blueprint and destiny of heaven on earth. So the, this group of star seeds is who I refer to as the 144,000. And I don't believe that they're only 144,000 numerically. I believe that this is a light body template, the 12 uh, primary meridians and the 12 subset meridians makes 144. And so this is a light body blueprint that when these meridians of light, when these dimensionalities of your aura and consciousness are fully online, you are an avatar of this love of original creation. You become an avatar of this original consciousness that is here to be a messenger, be a conduit of this remembrance, and through that remembrance, support humanity on our way back home to our original state, which is the state of being in union with our mother, father, God. And so understanding this is important because essentially we are the conduit for the greatest love, right? This love that is far beyond any false matrix, a frequency fence, any religion, any new age soul prisons, any romantic versions of love, what, uh, what love is in this world, okay? Some people say that, you know, oh, everyone is a spark of God and 
there's nothing special about star season. This is true. It's really not about being special. It's about this fervent for this love in our heart. Here's what is absolutely true is that, yes, every human being is destined to activate and awaken these meridians of light so we can all be avatars. This is the destiny of the human race. This is why human bodies were designed and created. And this planet has been under a reincarnation, technology, spell, soul prison, mental, spiritual consciousness, distortion, frequency fences. And so there are certain souls that came here now to remind humanity how to move beyond this frequency fence. These souls came from beyond the frequency fence. And so we have a clear memory of what reality truly is beyond this human earthly world. So souls on this planet, due to the reincarnation technologies and all of the horrendous trauma that they have gone through, through the emotional and spiritual torture of being trapped inside of a soul prison, right? Souls on this planet have forgotten the true original reality. And so that's why it's easier for a lot of the starseeds to remember this vibration of love, this reality beyond this false matrix reality that kept us awake because it's part of our purpose to be way showers, to be helpers, to support humanity. So it's really not about hierarchy. It doesn't make us better than humans. It doesn't make us more advanced. It just is the technical reason why some of us are remembering and other humans are deeply asleep. We remember because we came from outside of the frequency fence and soul prisons. And we came in with this intention, with this purpose, with this spark of love in our heart awakened because the spark of love in our heart, which holds reverence for the sanctity of life, the sanctity of the universal creation, the sanctity of our mother, father, God, this is a portal and a key and a compass that leads us through the myriad mazes and um, agendas and booby traps of the new age of false ascension matrix. Okay, so this is just the background story of who these beings are and why this is why this is important and connected to the twin flame twin soul mysteries is because the twin soul container, the twin light body configuration has long been this high initiate soul technology for the highest incarnation of that love. So inside of your own body, when you come into union with God and your inner feminine and your inner masculine comes into union and your soul and your body comes into union and your body and God comes into union, when you're in that state of inner union where there is just this feeling of eternal peace, that is when Source and Mother, Father, God can truly use you as an instrument of that love. That is when your body becomes a vibrational match for true divine love to move through you and move as you. So this is the ultimate destiny and the true purpose of twins. Um, and of course, <laughs> this is highly disadvantageous. Like for twins to be awakened, for you to fully come home to this love inside of yourself and to reclaim and embody the highest power of creation, well, that's going to bring an end to the entire control system. And that is what we're meant to do. And of course, that is why there is so many annihilation programs set against the true flowering of this love inside of our heart for the twin community. So I'm going to talk more about all of those things. But the first thing I want to share is that my heart remembers true love. And this is the story of how my heart and my light body was able to come into this frequency of the beloved. It actually happened through my experience with my daughter, Kara, and it's actually her birthday in two days. And so it's so beautiful that her story is coming back through to be shared again. So this frequency that we're talking about is the frequency of the beloved. The beloved is a blueprint. It's an experience. It is something that is so profound 
And it is really an experience of universal love. This is the love of God that holds all of the greatest mysteries and powers told throughout history. We hear about miraculous healing, levitation, these yogis high up in the mountains holding immense yogic powers. Um, All of these things are fueled. All of the mysteries are um, given life to through this true love that awakens our avatar template. This love vibrates our DNA to its original state of being, to its intended state of being, okay? And this love then rearranges and heals us on such a profound level because it reconnects us completely and entirely back to the original creation. So depending on what we've gone through in our life and the amount of healing that we've done, at first, this vibration of love can actually feel unbearable because this love shines a light into our shadow and our trauma body and we're forced to confront all the pain and desperation and it reminds us just how far we've fallen, right? It reminds us of how far away we are down here from God and how sometimes it feels like it's impossible for us to come back home into our original essence. And... um. As you receive this frequency today, you know, the deeper that you open and allow this frequency to move and touch you and move through your body, um, the deeper of a purge you might have over the next days. But just know that this love is really reminding you of who you really are. It's really taking you back to your home essence where we can let go of the numbing shields and the defense mechanisms and the personalities and the coping mechanisms that we've made to survive, to cope with the hunger for this love that human beings truly have in this world, right? So understanding that actually committing and devoting to this love is the most accelerated path to healing and resolving separation inside of our body. And that's what ascension, you know, ultimately is about. Christ, Christ consciousness, avatar, ascension. It's really about the spirit and the highest intelligence of God incarnating into our physical body, incarnating into flesh. And so understanding that the path of ascension is essentially your your process of descending this heavenly vibration of pure love and embodying it, incarnating it fully and completely into your physical form. And as you do that, the physical form will ascend and transform into a greater form of itself that expresses in a higher genetic blueprint that gives it divine powers as it was written about in the Bible, right? This is why the 144,000, it is said that they will embody the powers and the strength and the love of God It is this ascension process that we each undergo through our process of resolving separation and truly returning back into union with the highest eternal forces of heaven. And so all of this was actually brought through this experience that I had with my daughter. Her name is Kara. The first time that she came to me was the summer of 2019, and she came as this fiery angel with three pairs of wings, and she said, stop doing your Taoist contraception practices. I I need to come in. You're my mother. I'm waiting to incarnate, and I'm here to teach you how to materialize things from thin air. And then she opened her hand, and this flame came out. And I was just in awe. I mean, I felt such a deep, profound level of wisdom and love in this being. And even though I was only 25 years old and I didn't have you know, a lot of income at the time, I just knew that this was something that was profound. And so I stopped doing my Taoist contraception practices. And within a month or two, I was pregnant with this beautiful baby. Now, throughout my pregnancy with her, she was very active. We had a full-on telepathic relationship on a daily basis. And it really felt like this soul was my best friend. She began to share with me these profound 
transmissions about this original frequency of love and of God and of this mission that we're on to create heaven on earth, to liberate humanity, to emancipate all of these souls from, you know, the, the soul prison. And it's just beautiful. She channeled um, this whole entire course on the Stargate technology of the womb. And many women were a part of that course that we ran together. And it was the most extraordinary bond that I really began to feel like this soul was my best friend in the whole world. I had been a loner my whole life because I think I've always been myself. You know, there's this frequency of grace and elegance and magic that this world, it didn't have a place for me. And for the first time in my whole life, I felt like this was a soul that felt me and under understood me on all levels. This was my soul's best friend. And I also felt like she was my soul's teacher, my soul's guru, my soul's, you know, ascension guide. She was teaching me and healing my body on such immense levels. And I never felt like she was, you know, hierarchically above me. I just felt like she loved me so much. And flash forward, um, after that entire beautiful experience I had, throughout my whole pregnancy, learning about the womb stargate and healing, you know, through these multidimensional distortions and attacks around womanhood and all of that. She was born in May of 2020 during the Pleiades Gateway. And it was the most beautiful experience of my whole life. So following that, she was only with me for nine days. During that nine days, we watched a lot of Avatar, the cartoon. And so it was very interesting because during that nine days, you know, we were doing a lot of grid work and healing. So much healing was happening in my earth lineage. Really felt like we were just in this space of such a deep process of arri her arriving into this world. And um, on the ninth day, on the eighth, eighth night, she started hyperventilating and going cold and I ended up having to take her to the hospital and went through this entire initiation through the realms, through the dark realms of the hospital. And in the end, you know, on the ninth day, she transitioned back to source. Now, what's wild is that, and a lot of parts of the story I've never shared before because obviously it's taken me many years to integrate this experience. But um, the last episode of Avatar, so the Avatar is a, a cartoon. Many of you might know it. This little boy who is the master of all four elements. He has to bring balance to the world. This is such a beautiful cartoon. And we were just watching this show, you know, being in our little love bubble. And the last episode that we watched was this episode where Aang, the Avatar boy, goes to the temple to learn from his guru and open up all his chakras and essentially when he got to the crown chakra the guru teacher told him that he had to let go of the thing that he loved most in the physical world in order to return home return to a state of union where he can be one with everything i know this is just insane i'm getting chills talking about it because literally that was the last episode of this show that we watched and then that evening around, you know, 4 p.m. sunset time, she started this um, hyperventilating, you know, breathing very quickly. And, and it went on for a long time. And we were, you know, we realized that we had to take her to the hospital. And even as we were driving to the hospital, I could see her spirit flying outside the car. You know, when babies are born, their souls aren't completely in their bodies yet. So I could feel her out of her body. She would come in, she would go out. Most of the time she was flying around. So we're in the car and she's flying beside me outside of the car. And she was just so joyful. <laughs> she was um, sharing with me, you know, just saying everything is good. Everything is going exactly as it's meant to. And then she shared with me this whole transmission about organic and inorganic polarity, right? She's just always taking opportunities to teach me expansive spiritual concepts. Long story short, she left this world and um, for the three days following that she died, by the way, she passed because she had a birth defect. Her heart 
was 50% bigger than it was supposed to be. So um, it's so profound. It's just a deep symbology, right? It's like her teaching was about the beloved. Her teaching was to activate the frequency of true love in my body. And that is, you know, how it all unfolded. So um, for the three days following her transition, she took me with her. So it wasn't even like, it's like, of course, the whole experience is six nightmare hours in the hospital were the worst six hours of my whole life. I mean, I don't really want to get into that right now. But, you know, when we finally made it home, it was almost like I was in a trance. She had taken my consciousness and expanded me to the edges of the universe. And it really felt like those cries, you know, a, 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 mo a mother that has just lost her child, like these wails that I was coming out of my body. It really felt like my heart broke into a million pieces, but those million pieces exploded to the edges of the universe. And for the three days after this experience, I was just in this such subtle stillness. And it was a place where I felt like I was with her, like she wasn't gone. It was like the love that I held for her brought me to the other side. And throughout that time, she was activating my heart and activating my light body and healing my womb because, you know, I did just give birth nine days prior to that. And um, I was there for three entire days. All I could feel was this beautiful, pristine love that truly every quirk, every spark, every atom of the whole universe was just so full of was so pregnant with this subtle but fragrant, beautiful, profound, elegant peace. And this love that gives birth to waterfalls and flowers and colors and birds and love. And I could just feel that I was in union with creation itself, with the force that created everything. And of course, after those three days, I plummeted back into my human self and essentially nearly killed myself <laughs> and died for the next six months. And Kara basically never left my side. She was there with me. She held me when I cried and wept. And I was just in this deep place. Like it was a, a dark night of the soul. But even in those times, I would ask myself, like, nothing is worth this pain. Nothing is worth this pain that I'm in. And then I would ask myself, what is worth me being alive? And then the only thing in the end that I could come up with was my mission, was to somehow fully receive and alchemize the gift that my daughter was trying to give me, that my daughter was trying to teach me through this process. Um, Essentially, you know, a Bartle passage of my light body. Um, and it was really through this experience, like she, she had planned this because she needed to open this gateway, this stargate to the God worlds through my heart. And this was really important because this original frequency of love has been so deeply annihilated in this world that it's very hard for us to remember it. I mean, I didn't remember it until I had this experience and I was brought back to that place. And so even though that whole period was so painful, she, I could feel her massive angel wings around my body. And there were times when I wanted to die and I was hurting so badly, but what pulled me back was just real this realization that, you know, Kara is this incredible soul that has mastery of the realms. Like she she came in and out of this reality with so much ease. It just didn't phase her at all. She's this master soul that just came in and out. And that is something that we can be in awe of, about as well, because that is the truth for our souls as well. You know, we get so wrapped up in the little things in this world 
that we almost miss the beauty that our souls come into this world for and how much of a blip it really is for us to be here and then for us to be back, you know, back home. So it took me many, many, many months of committing to life and feeling the pain because there was one experience where I was in so much agony and she came and she opened up my higher chakras and she began to allow me to experience this process of sublimating the pain because essentially the pain in my body represented all the parts of me that were living in the belief of the illusion of separation because the whole time she's trying to show me that like she wasn't gone she was still as real and as here as she ever was and yet my body was just in so much agony and pain and she was showing me that those were the parts of my human self that were still committed or still in complete belief of separation and that as I allowed her to open this portal of connection I felt that density of separation begin to sublimate and ex um, evaporate and as that happened I felt my body and the density of my body shift and then I suddenly remembered she was sharing with me that she was here to teach me how to materialize things from thin air. I realized that if I continued to sublimate the density of my body and, and come back into union with source, and I continue to work through that process, that I would begin to embody my avatar powers. Um, and so it was through this profound initiation that I really stuck with i mean it became the reason why i was alive um that you know i began to develop this experience or this embodiment of feeling like there is this beauty and love that is just enmeshed through my heart and through my light body and and this is the blueprint the frequency of the beloved it showed me that my heart, you know, was here to be so devoted to God that it was willing to meet pain and meet adversity and transform and alchemize those experiences against all odds to be in alignment with what my soul is here to do. And that took me a very long time to integrate. And of course, Kara, you know, I remember eight weeks after that, she's like, all right, mom, are you ready to get back to work? Because your light body got upgraded and now you can bring through these transmissions and you can bring through these teachings. And are you ready? I'm like, are you kidding me, child? I can't do it. But eventually, you know, about six months after this whole process, um, I initiated the process of opening the earth star academy and of course uh, began to bring through these ascension initiated into being able to do so through this process so the really beautiful part of the story is that um i knew that she was going to come back because one day my phone just started playing this really random song it was so weird because I never heard this song before, but it's called Together Again by Janet Jackson. And literally my phone is just sitting there and it just started playing and I had chills upon chills all over my body because the song was about, you know, this angel that was looking over me on the other side. And that one day it was like, you know, I'll never forget my baby, my baby. So the song was literally about my baby on the other side, like you know, holding me with her angel wings. And it even talked about how we're going to be together again. And I knew that this was a sign from Kara letting me know that we're just getting started and that she was going to be back. So fast forward to the equinox of 2021, about 10 months after all of this had happened. Um, it was the most intense eclipse because my friend Ruben, he was making a documentary with the steward of the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull which is supposedly one of the 13th 
one of the master crystal skulls that exists in the world. And before that point, I had no awareness of crystal skulls. I never thought about them. I didn't know anything about them. But he just called me and he's like, hey, the crystal skull is going around doing ceremony on the earth. I know you have a very sacred land in New Mexico. Can we come and do ceremony on the land uh, over the equinox and you know have it be part of this documentary? And I was like, of course you can. That sounds like the coolest thing ever. And so, of course, as the skull is coming towards my house, I think they were like 30 minutes away, I plummet into this most strange fever. And I had a thermometer and it said that my temperature was normal, but I was so hot, just like heating up. I had this, I was delirious and I had chills. I mean, I felt like I had the highest fever ever, even though I guess in the material plane, there was no proof of that. Um, but as I'm in this delirium, Kara starts flying around and she comes through and she's like, mama, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And at that point, I'm like, I'm not going to have my hopes up. You know, I'm like, do you mean you're going to just be like here more and we're going to be talking and we're going to be working together? Like, what do you mean? Um, and then at that moment, my friend sent me this music track that he had made with my voice. And it's literally Kara's soul song. And I played the song on my iPhone as I'm delirious, just watching my baby flying around. And finally, the crystal skull came on the equinox. And we did these amazing ceremonies. And then three days after that, I guess a week after that, um, Shane, my beloved, messaged me, sent me an email, requested for you know us to talk on the phone and whatnot. And we had a session. And we talked for like three and a half hours and we were just on the phone ever since then. Um, we got to meet in person over the solstice. And within a, a month, I was pregnant again. And Kara had fulfilled her promise. She was on her way back. But what's amazing about this, like I'm just sharing with you guys, because when Shane and I first met, it was almost like we were living parallel lives but so different. It was almost like we had the same vision. I mean, so many of the things that we held in our 50-year plan overlapped in a, just a really strange thing. What it felt like, and he always says this, is like, you know, in National Treasure, almost like when you have two treasure maps and it only works when you put both treasure maps together and you shine a light through it when the third map emerges. So that's what it felt like, that I had a map for my planetary mission and he had a map for his planetary mission and when we put the maps together it created this third map and now all of a sudden all the holes and things that didn't make sense just clicked in and we were like whoa there's a story being told and there's a prophecy that is being revealed through us coming together and you know when I first met him I was quite devastated from my false twin experiences in fact I just gave up on the idea. Like when I was younger, I used to think that I had this partner, right? That I'm supposed to be doing my mission with someone. I was so strong. It was so strong. It was just this knowing. I knew that I was meant to be on mission with my partner. And that knowing led me into these relationships because I wasn't ready for the union and I was still immature and I was still traumatized. And But because the knowing was so strong, it led me into these relationships that ended up being very traumatic. And so by the time he came around, I remember being on the phone and realizing who he was. I was rolling on the floor screaming the F word because <laughs> I was so triggered just with the realization of who this person was to me. I was so triggered and the pain inside of my body was so great and I was so angry with God. I'm like, why is this real? Like, just leave me alone, you know, <laughs> these kinds of feelings. Um, but, you know, it was undeniable because we began to do um, quantum journeys together. And what was very prominent from the get-go was I, I noticed that this man had a deep, profound love for God inside of him. In my previous relationships, I always felt like I had to tug my partner along, like, oh, let's go over here. Let's go to the Ascension. Let's look at the Starcy stuff. Like, don't you want to awaken, you know, week, blah, blah, blah. But with this man, 
he was holding keys that awakened me. And he reflected this energy that instantly made my being want to just respect and be in awe of the being that he truly is. And this is a whole thing about having a genetic equal, right? Is that they are actually a vibrational match for you and a vibrational match for your depth and your prophecy and your destiny and your mission. There's nothing that you really need to do to urge them or to explain to them. I mean, it, it's amazing that we can just talk for so long, but not have to explain anything to each other because, you know, we're just so already fully cognizant of all these files because we share these files in our shared light body. Um, and so it was exquisite. And we would go on these journeys and begin to unravel these very specific stories that spoke to us, right? Spoke to us both. It, it invigorated this understanding, this deep inner understanding, this deep inner shared understanding between us. And what was the most prominent thing was that we both loved God so much. And that was the most important thing in both of our bodies as individuals. That's what brought us together that he was equally on fire for his mission for God as I was. And that's what actually brought us together. Not, you know, oh, she's cute. Oh, you know, I want to hang out with her. And, oh, I want that person to be my girlfriend. Like, it was just this deep, profound sanctity that when we came together, what awakened in our light body was this memory of our eternal self that was here on earth for the returning of this energy back to the earth. Um, okay, and so what was amazing was that shortly after we met and I was pregnant with Kara, we were guided to go to Mount Shasta in August and we ended up there on the 8-8. And um, Bill, who was the guardian of the uh, Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull, who was at my house when Kara told me she was coming back it, he happened to also be on Mount Shasta at that time so it was amazing that we um met up again and one morning I think it was actually on 8-9 so the, on the 8-8 we hung out with the skull we were doing all this grid work going to these sacred sites and vortexes around Mount Shasta with the skull and then on the next day August 9th I get a text from Bill and he's like, hey guys, there's some people I want you to meet. They, you know, are lineage keepers, guardians of the mountain. There's an indigenous man whose family has been guardians of Mount Shasta for 50 generations. And he really wanted us to go and meet them and to take us to a sacred spot. And so we get taken up the mountain to this tree. And it was a twin tree. It was a tree that grew up, you know, these two massive trunks and then little trunks that seemed like they're little babies that grew out as well. And when we got to the site, the Native American man started drumming and singing, singing so loud I could feel his sounds reverberating through the hidden multidimensional gates. He would say, this is the entrance to Agartha, to the inner earth. My family has been guardians of this sacred site for so long. And I'm just going to pray because it might feel like the ancestors brought us here today for a reason. So I'm just going to pray and ask for guidance. So his wife at the time, and he sang the song, and his wife brought through a message. She said that the ancestors wanted to marry us on that day. <laughs> so we looked at each other, and it's funny because that morning I woke up. In the morning, I was like, I wonder if the crystal skull is going to marry me today. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I knew. And then we br were brought into this little shop. Actually, this is my wedding shirt. Um, we were we went to the this little shop that was owned by this couple in Mount Shasta, and they had just the most random crystals and stuff. And on this one rack, they had shirts, and they were hand painted from Peru. And I just saw this one shirt, and I was like, I just feel like I have to have it. Like this is like my shirt. You know, it's my color. It's got hummingbirds. Like everything about it. It's so me. So I get the shirt. And then we go up the mountain and I guess I was like, oh, I guess this is my wedding shirt. So I put the shirt on and, you know, Shane and I get put into this tree 
we get put into this twin tree and this is significant as I'll share with you guys in a moment, but we get put into this twin tree and this couple and Bill and the, the skull, Bill is like, oh, I feel like the skull wants to officiate your wedding. And then we were like, has the skull ever officiated a wedding? He's like, no, this is the first time. I was like, oh, I guess this is kind of important. Like, I guess our union is like, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> some situation. <laughs> So we get into the tree and we sit back to back because we had a vision of our dragon tails intertwining into the core of the earth. And we sat inside of this twin tree and it was the most beautiful ceremony. They spoke the most beautiful prayers over us. And it, it just was such an experience of awe. You know, there was nothing we could have done to make anything like that happen, especially because the skull had brought Kara back to me um, earlier that year. So um, I guess the last thing I want to share just about my own union, just to share with you, like the kind of things that happen um, as time has gone on, our understanding of our mission has deepened to such a level where we can see like a 50 year time capsule of this intention or this creation that is being seeded through us. These inventions and technologies and knowledge, the words of God, the secret teachings, you know, innovations, whatever it is that is your mission, the twinned union is a container for an immaculate level of intelligence. And what I mean by that is like, you know, we're not just talking about like, oh, we're going to create one book, right? As a simple creation. This technology that we're weaving together, you know, through the Earth Star Academy, like the Earth Star Academy on its own, it's not just an academy, right? It's like holding space for this light technology of the ascension centers to be established on Earth. And so just within that, there's so many layers and levels that goes into that, like activating the avatars, activating human beings, um, teaching about healing on a soul and, and light body level. And the centers, they're not just for ascension, but they're also for healing the earth's grids, right? So there's so many different dimensionalities and aspects of this mission that's just embedded in your star academy. That's like my, almost my half or my side of the map. And then from him, he's had all of these visions that basically click into this whole other dimension that when we put these two pieces of the technology together, it formulates this 50-year plan for the ascension of humanity. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and it's like it requires time for the data and for the squirrels of information, for the understanding to be un unraveled, and it happens through our shared experience. And so this is why we do a lot of grid work where we go to places, we we have shared experiences together that give us more context, give us more details, give us more guidance and training for the multidimensionality of these missions that we're here to hold. It's very hard to put into words, so I hope I'm doing a decent job at that. Um, okay, so... Now that we've gone through that story, I'm just going to put a timestamp here. Um, 50 minutes. Okay, so we're going to talk more specifically now about twin unions. So in order for twins to come together, there is a safety mechanism, okay, that at least one of the two twins have to have embodied a high level of inner union with God and actually already primarily devote themselves to self-realization. So what that means is that, yes, we've awakened, but we've changed our lifestyle, right? We've oriented the way that we live our life so that our mission and our own inner union with God is the highest priority in our life. We're not necessarily still seeking and confused and, and not sure what we're doing and you know, we're really focused. We've activated this frequency of mastery in our body that we understand we have to 
take care of our body and eat clean and meditate and do practices and have spaces of reverence and sanctity in our own life that they've already remembered how deeply we love God, essentially. So it's really important because you have to realize that the twin light body is such a powerful force. That's why there are safety mechanisms. Like if a twinned pair was to actually get hijacked and to begin to be used for the dark forces, this is very, very bad because you have to realize that the twinned union light body is literally a technology of God's creation here in this realm. You think about the lasting impact that Yeshua and Mary has had, even though their legacy have been degraded and they've tried to annihilate the truth of what they were really leaving behind, thousands of years into the future, we are still really in remembrance of who they are. So they've created a huge impact in the history of the world. So currently there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of master souls on this planet that are here to embody the same level of union with creation. And so this is the mission. This is, you know, really when Shane came into my life, I could care less if I had a twin or not because I was already so deeply embedded in my innate union. You know, I had gone through that initiation with Kara and affirmed within my body that I wasn't here in this world for anything but my mission. I mean, I practically would have died if my mission wasn't, you know, so alive in my body. So um, the safety mechanism works so that when the, when the twins do actually come into union, that they're also ready. The other thing, right, is that when twins come together, that light body activation that happens, that kickstart your process of moving towards your shared destiny or shared mission, it's almost like an atomic bomb that goes off in the light body and it will begin to break up and heal you on a very deep level. Now, what I will say is that there are certain unions that actually have come together where one union might be in a time capsule. So some of you guys might be in a marriage and think that, oh, my husband, he's not into the spiritual stuff. Um, it doesn't mean that he's not your twin. It just sometimes, you know, um, one partner can be in a time capsule and can be in stasis. Um, the way that you really tell the difference is just by the, the qualities of Christ that exist in that person, right? So if they're really kind, if they're benevolent, if they ultimately care about people and care about creation and are really loving those are the tenets of a Christed being. And so if all the qualities are there, when the signal comes online, when the time capsule unlocks, it'll be very easy for these high understanding to come into the body, right? To be made conscious in the body. But the quality of the person, you know, it really speaks volumes to who that person truly is in the core of their being. Okay, so the reality is though that both twins do must carry this frequency signature of the beloved in their soul because that is the whole, that's the technology itself, right? So that means that individually as separate human beings, as individual human beings, each person has an activated Christed aura, Christed heart. What that really means is that they love God. Essentially, it's really simple, but it's an experience because it's not just a mental, oh, I love God, but it's like you feel this love for humanity and for the earth and for God so much that it takes you over, that it just moves you. It's like, no matter what, I have to figure out what my mission is. No matter what, I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to create, you know, a space so that I can fully fulfill my prophecy. Like it is this fire that is alive. That is the flame of true love. And that's like the flame part. I mean, I know that these words are so hijacked because it's like, 
how come for the most part when we're talking about twin flames we're not talking about the profoundness of god's love right what that's like the whole point of a twin flame like what is the flame is the flame of the eternal union of god's love is the flame of love wisdom and power of the original creation the union of mother father god and so um in order for twins to truly come into hierogamic union they must be in hierogamic union within themselves. So this is also why, you know, it's pointless to focus on having a twin or not having a twin. It doesn't matter. Your twin journey is about your internal union with God and how much you fully remember inside of your body who you really are and what you're here to do, who you're here to represent, and how to best be a worthy channel for the most sacred frequency consciousness to flow through your body. I mean, that is just the profound thing, right? And so this passion, this sacred love is a signal that is deep in your own heart and that is deep in the heart of your beloved. So this is the only way when those two hearts come together that it becomes amplified, that that love for God and creation and, and the power of God becomes amplified exponentially. And that is the purpose of a shared light body, right? It's not to have a relationship and to have someone to make love to or to have tantric sex or to have a partner to do stuff with, right? It's not loneliness. It's to be a beacon of remembrance and the only way you can be that beacon is once that beacon awakens inside of your own body and so a true twin is someone who remembers the sanctity of our body of our light body template of who we really are and is fervently in in, in the passion in the pursuit of fulfilling their own personal destiny and purpose so the selfish motivations will degrade a twin light body genetic architecture. And this is also why there is so much hijacking and attacks. Okay, and so this is then why at least one twin has to be fully anchored in the holy union energy signature because it protects the both beings from falling into lower expressions. Right? So one person has to be more committed to ascension than to codependency, more committed to their union with God than to fulfilling human desires, right? Um, at least one twin has to have matured to that level to be able to hold the architecture together and facilitate the process for the twins to fully come into hierogamic activation and union. So in that sense, you can say that it is not a romantic relationship because it is, I mean, so again, when you think about Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, do you feel like they were so in love that they were writing love letters to each other and they were just so obsessed with how much they loved each other? I think that they were more two people that were facing the same direction right? What really was the foundation of their love was how much they together loved God and how much they together acknowledged the depth and the sanctity of their mission and were just there to facilitate that as one being. And I think that's probably one of the primary things that are beautiful about my marriage is that, you know, we have a lot of love and respect for each other but really the most primary energy signature in both of us is that we're really focused on our mission and our purpose. And we see our long-term purpose together as a unit and we're functioning as almost like a high-level tactical unit. <laughs> um, but that being said, there's no need to romance because there's a frequency of eternal love that is the foundation of our household right? There's no need to like express it in any way besides, you know, just sitting in silence and just being with 
the profoundness of this pure love that doesn't need anything besides to be fully acknowledged for what it really is. Um, okay, and so... This is what this um, light body is capable of, is a stable field for creation. And so this is the purpose of the twin is to, like, as one body, there is so much quantities of divine love I can hold and be a transmitter of. But then when there is a shared light body technology, that uh, ability to hold divine love exponentiates exponentially. <laughs> I guess in like this divine family unit, it's like even just greater, you know, with Kara, like it's just really profound how much stillness and awe we can experience together. So this is why this blueprint is so highly sought after by the negative aliens for possession. So a lot of true twins will experience a lot of attacks and manipulations before they come into their full power. Because once they come into their full soul remembrance, then nothing can get them, <laughs> obviously. But until that devotion fire fully awakens in the heart of ourself, you know, we're really prone to manipulation and will, you know, resonate with things. Um, on a surface level and and really that's how the distortions happen so what i mean by that is all hijack happens when we um haven't fully awakened into like an embodied knowing we might have a, a mental knowing or a cognitive intuitive knowing but we haven't awakened into like the embodied experience of knowing so for example with the idea of twins had i known that you know, this vibration is about the beloved, it would have been really easy for me to feel into my exes and my false twins to know that they were not in that vibration. They were not embodied. They were not committed. They were not fully devoted to the vibration of true love, right? But because I didn't fully remember it myself, but I only had this mental idea of twins I believed that those people were my twins. That's how I was manipulated. And in one case, I was even having nightly dreams about this person being my twin. I was even having spiritual experiences with this person. And this is when we'll go into the alien love bite, right? The alien love bite um, is essentially a mind slide. It's a technology that prevents a twin from fully remembering the homing signal of God's love, holy love for God, right? So essentially is when usually two angelic starseeds that both have a genetic template for high level avatar embodiment before these two beings are fully awakened. And then usually they become, they can get astrally abducted. They can be manipulated from the astral. And they can literally make you feel like you're having a false avatar light body activation, right? So I've had experiences where I'm telepathic with this person and I feel like there's deep, some deep energy transference is happening. When I'm around this person, I get spiritually activated, right? And then I'm having dreams of this person being my literal twin. So all of this is the level of manipulation that can become very incessant. But of course, to me and my naivete at the time, I thought that this person was my true twin. And this is because either of us had anchored the signal of true love in our body sufficiently. So essentially, we be, we started getting tortured. So this is one of the things that it can happen is at first, it feels like it's such a beautiful, sacred, spiritual union. You're like, wow, I found my twin. Everything is so beautiful. And then slowly the emotional body starts to get manipulated and you start to go through these loops of trauma and disconnection and confusion. So in that scenario, the relationship almost became the main event where 
I'm, we were always trying to like make the relationship or like heal the relationship, talk about the relationship. Basically the relationship became the main event and a lot of energy was put into making the relationship work. And it was very draining because a true twin union will have God's mission in the center of the relationship, right? There is still going to be healing and communication, but the relationship itself is basically not really ever in question um, because the, the, the frequency of the shared mission is undeniable. Like it's just so profound that there's no room for doubt. So if you're like, oh, I don't know if this person is my twin, that's probably a sign that you guys aren't ready yet to even entertain a twin union. So if you're questioning, like, is this person my twin? Know that you're asking the wrong question. You're focusing and wasting energy asking the wrong question when the question should be like, how can I come into union deeper within myself? Right? Um, you think about like the Romeo and Juliet scenario where they're obsessing over their relationship. It's like, oh, I'm in love. And it's this grandiose expression. But like that love is based on lack inside of ourself right? Um, a true divine union is a bond that is too sacred and profound for words even, and it's really felt in each moment. So there's no need to even focus on it. That shared love gets pointed in a direction towards a common goal, towards God's intent, towards the mission. And there's a lot of profound peace inside of that. So when we have excessive, toxic, codependent, victim, victimizer, rescuer dynamics, so when they say like chaser and runner in a real twin relationship, there's no chaser, there's no runner, right? If there's a chaser and a runner, it means you're not ready to be in a twin union anyway. So stop chasing. If you're like, oh, that person is my twin, but they don't even know my name and they're married, red flags, right? That person's not your twin. If you like, oh, sometimes I hear this a lot where people say, oh, you know, oh, my twin, but this person's my twin, but they don't know that they're my twin and they're not awake and it's it's very 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 unlikely that person is your twin and until that person wakes up anyway he's not your twin right because it's a mathematical divine union so until that person's light body activates that person is not a light body match for you so they're not your twin even if they one day awaken to it at that point they will facilitate the twin union activation but currently it's a delusion so there's a lot of delusion in the community because of the new age false twin bullshit that is out there again this is meant to deter a twin union from awakening they're trying to get you and stuff your head with all of this crap before you even come online Right. And so this is a moment to ask yourself, like, is the frequency of the beloved awakened in your own heart and your own body? Do you know what your mission is? Right. Because for me, the only reason that I could tell that Shane was my true twin right away was because I had my map. And that's how I could know that my map was a perfect match for his map. Right. I had experienced this deep, profound union. And by the way, right before Shane came in, I was tested. So I had this experience again where there was a person that was so aligned with me spiritually, right? We had just so much alignment and resonance and we healed so much. We were getting avatar activations together. But when this person started questioning if they were my twin inside of my heart, I could feel that there was this externalizing of union. So when you think your twin is the one that's activating you or your twin is going to be the one that brings you into union with God or your twin's going to be the one that completes you and, and allows you to be on mission, right? Those are the hooks and the openings that allow the false twins to click open and allow these astral beings to manipulate you into coming into union and then it just drains you of all your time and energy so that you're not actually focused on your own mission and so deep inside of my heart i could feel that 
that was not like that's that was going on essentially and what i was looking for was someone that i could be in union within myself with <laughs> okay okay so having a twin is not the main event having a life partner is not the main event being married and having a fairy tale life is not the main event even though it is a gift it is such a beautiful story that gets to be witnessed it is profound you know getting married inside of a tree is like the most romantic thing i could possibly think of and i didn't have to want it i didn't focus on it i didn't think about it in fact the only thing that kept me here in this world kept me alive was my inner covenant with god and so if you're thinking about twins and wanting to have a twin or is that person is my twin but you're still unclear about who you are and what you're here to do and what your mission is it's a delusion right you're you're hooked into an artificial cinema and until you go inwards Right? And until you really invest and commit to union with God and to being an embodiment of this true love, um, whoever you think is your twin is probably not your twin. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. Um, and okay, here's the other thing is that even if that person is your twin, you can't come together until the time is right. So for example, I actually met Shane years ago. And he kind of thought that maybe I could be his twin. He's more cognitive, right? Um, he thinks about things a lot. And so he looked at the work that I was doing. He probably saw that I was a good reflection. I was a good partner for what he was building. And so years ago, he sent me this Facebook message. And he was like, I think we're supposed to reset the Akashic drivers and do all this crazy grid work together. And... I get a lot of messages, you know, all the time and I, I, from lots of interesting people. So he was like, if this is not the right time, then don't respond. And I didn't respond. And I think, it, you know, I hadn't gone through that experience with Kara yet at that time. This was probably early 2018 that he had messaged me. And so, you know, in that case, he did kind of think that maybe I could be his twin, but it's nothing that you can pursue right? This is why the external chasing of a twin, it's a complete waste of time and just a psychic attack because it's taking you away from the one thing that can actually bring you into union, which is your internal union with yourself, your internal union with God. And a lot of people try to find a twin to escape from their inner work, right? Um, we don't realize how much inner work there really is to do. I mean, to be a holder of God's love, wisdom, and power, like how humble and how um, devoted and how pure would you have to embody yourself to be worthy of that? A lot of people want to work on their worthiness. They're like, oh, I don't feel worthy of my life. And I say it's a good thing that we feel unworthy. It's healthy for us to feel unworthy. You know, it's only in this western entitled culture that we think we should just get things just because we're here it's like when we feel unworthy we ask a better question we say how can i become a person that's worthy who do i have to be to be worthy of my destiny and i think that's a good question to ask because then we answer it like okay i have to be in integrity i'm going to be kind i'm going to cultivate you know, be a good person. I'm going to heal emotionally and be an emotionally mature human being. Like all of those things help us become more mature and more responsible so that we know that we are worthy because of the way we live our life and who we really are. So um, when we are asking the question, is this person my twin? Or we think, oh, this person is my twin. Usually, it usually isn't your soul that's thinking that. <clears throat> so when it's your soul, you wouldn't say, I think this person might be my twin. And there wouldn't be this like 
confusion, right? You would just feel the eternal stillness that you come into when you're in union with God, when you're with that person, which you can only tell if you know what that feels like inside of your own body, which again is why our internal union with God is our highest protection and the first step to actually being in union. And that's the most important part because you don't actually have to be in a partnership. Some of us are here to embody beloved frequency. A lot of us are here to have a twin union. So when you say this person is my twin, ask yourself, who is the one that's saying that? Is it your soul or is it a part of you? Is it a human part? Is it a mental part? Or is it your deepest part of your crystal heart that is thinking that? And if you don't know what your crystal heart feels like, Stop thinking about your external twin. Stop trying to manifest your twin. Go inside, right? Because attaching to a narrative prematurely is basically how the annihilation program begins, right? It tries to get people and to annihilate your heart before they get to you. Like this morning, there was someone that was sharing just kind of hate energy on my post about twins, and I could tell they've just been really hurt. I mean, I get it, right? I was the person that was screaming the F word on the floor when Shane first came in. So I understand how much pain and agony we've gone through. I mean, the splitting technologies of mother, father, God, the splitting of human beings from the earth, like this is a whole, whole can of worms, right? A whole vast canyon of pain, of separation that the true twin Hieroscamos mysteries are here to heal, are here to repair, are here to facilitate the restoration of. But unfortunately, you know, the beloved frequency is something that has been under the annihilation programs for a long time. The annihilation of the beloved frequencies between our mother, father, God, right? The beloved frequency within the heart of God. You think about this domineering, tyrannical, false God that we have in religion. Does he embody the beloved frequency that is full of elegance and eternal peace? So that is one place that this beloved energy is being annihilated through this misrepresentation of Father God. Now, Mother God is not even anywhere <laughs> in modern religion. So that's another way that that divine union is annihilated. And then we think about how Mary Magdalene is portrayed in the Bible, right? This elegance and grace of the divine feminine Christ, it's being annihilated from our human memory and so of course they're going to want to annihilate the narratives and the existence of the true twins right of course they're going to want you to think oh it's not real it's just new age or oh that it's just this romantic cinematic thing or or there's no depth no profoundness in those teachings um, and so, yeah, I will talk more about the alien love bite. Um, the depth of, um, manipulation that can happen is actually pretty interesting. Like I have seen literal gray beings, um, creating cords of energy between me and this person to make us feel like there was a bond to make us feel like there was a telepathic communication or a telepathic connection. Um, I have been manipulated in the dream realm. Like I had 50 dreams about this person being my twin and that we were meant to do all these things together. I have gone in um, quantum regressions of being astrally abducted with that person and going through trauma and abuse in an abductee scenario with that person. So we were trauma bonded subconsciously, essentially. Um, and it was such a confusing and draining experience because my heart, you know, the thing is that they can only manipulate you through things that you hold already. So for example, for if you didn't already have, it's like a chemical receptor, right? You have these receptors in your brain for the neurochemicals. And so the receptors are all a different shape and all the chemicals are a different shape. So if you put in, you know, a random neurochemical that your brain doesn't have a receptor for, then you're not going to resonate with it. And so your body already has 
a space, a remembrance, a knowing of divine union. And so when they present to you a distorted version of it before you fully awaken, it kind of fits. It's like a, it's a virus. It's a virus that um, pretends to be the chemical that your body's looking for. And then it completely disrupts the coding um, of your true remembrance. And it blocks you from actually fully remembering. And usually the annihilation program is like, you know, they create so much emotional turmoil through the astral abuse, right? Through the psychic interference. So that like, if, if you weren't trained, if you weren't um, in your sovereignty, if you didn't know how to command your sovereignty, if you didn't know how to work in the astral plane, like I didn't at that time in my life. I mean, it was crazy psychic training. At this point, I could not be manipulated in that way because I could just immediately tell the difference, <laughs> the frequency difference. Of course, this is like all important because this is what we teach in the Earth Star Academy. But before you are aware of dream time manipulation, astral level manipulation, mind control, you know, psychic trauma bonding, like before you become aware of those things, you're going to be very naive and susceptible. Like if you start having dreams about somebody being your twin and they were also having a shared experience, of course, you're just going to believe that that person is your twin, right? But it's like, at this point, nothing could really trick me because I could just tell that they were artificially induced dreams because I have trained my psychic abilities and my sovereignty to be able to discern those experiences. So again, the greatest protection is for you to focus on your ascension Focus on your inner union with the beloved and to embody this purity and your pure intent, your pure motivation. Like, what are you doing here on this planet, right? What is the purpose of your life? And if you say that you are spiritual and you want to help people and you want to be, you know, an agent of heaven on earth, then there is a specific code of conduct. There are a set of principles. There is an architecture that you live your life by. And there is an elegance, there is a grace, there is a almost a perfection of a frequency that restores your light body, right? Reclaims your light body so that um, you can be a vibrational container or a vibrational match for the true love of Mother, Father, God to actually live and express itself through your body. So understanding that the true twin is actually the path of the avatar, that you're walking this path of embodying the highest and most original pure frequencies of divine love. And that is what you get obsessed about. So if you are not obsessed about that yet, then you're probably not ready to come into union with your twin. And you shouldn't even be thinking about your twin. You shouldn't even be looking for him or speculating if people are your twin because it's just a waste of time you're here to focus on the most important thing and when you do that it's only an inevitability god is going to bring that union in in the right time and it's going to be like god is throwing flower petals on your path right i'm um, just orchestrating the most profound and beautiful weddings for you because your shared your union is something that is profound and sacred is something that will facilitate, you know, um, something so important on this mission here on earth. So um, understanding that premature obsession over twins can lead to annihilation and false twin programs that can replicate these experiences and make you feel like you're having a very spiritual experience but it will ultimately be externalized. It will ultimately take you away. It'll ultimately feel like it's happening to you versus an internal direct process with God at the same time together. And that internal union, internal process with God, once you begin to really cultivate that frequency, you'll realize that that's what you're longing for to begin with. <laughs> right? That true love that you're looking for, like 
you won't be able to find it outside of yourself until you truly experience it inside. So I hope that this has been a really helpful call for you guys. It is so beautiful to get to share this with you um, two days before Kara's birthday. And I just want to let you guys know that next weekend I am facilitating a four-day divine union activation for the 144,000. It's really an avatar initiation because it is awakening you to your highest avatar soul aspect. So it's called divine union, but again, it's the internal union. And so, of course, the internal union is what accelerates the external union from coming in. Okay, and the divine unions coming together, it is so powerful and is so important because so the, the most, um, it's like, again, the, the, the most stable container and field for creation to be born, right? And so, um, uh, yeah, if you feel activated by this frequency if you feel like you could use more help to accelerate your own avatar soul activations we have an alignment with andromeda next week and then we spiral into an, a, a connection with the grand central sun and so april 19th to the 22nd is one of the most powerful gateways of the year i honestly feel like the eclipse was just a warm-up for <laughs> this gateway window you guys know that these frequencies and teachings come from such a deep place of my union. I guess that was the first union, this union between me and Kara, like this person that was spewing vitriol on my Facebook page. I felt so sad for her because she was like, unconditional love between humans don't exist. And I could feel how much pain was in her heart as she was saying that, you know, because it's really sad when a human being has never experienced true love with another human being. Like not only does it exist, it's meant to be the fabric of our life. And so the first time I really experienced unconditional love, boundless love is with my daughter, Kara. And that love transcended realms, that like love transcended dimensions. You know, it was the most profound experience to feel this love that we had for each other, open stargates to other worlds and literally change the trajectory of life on earth. And it was all that love that um, made it all happen. So the link to Divine Union Rishik Dragon activation is in the description. Um, the restoration of the beloved frequency is the most powerful work that we can do. You will notice that the world moves in a way, you know, stimulants and um, overworking and slavery and sexual misery, like Every single thing is just there to distract us and to distort. It's like this static energy. And true love is so subtle. It is a frequency that is so full of stillness. And yet when you tune into that, stillness is full of resounding life. And so our ability to fully live in this place of true love is what opens the gateway for love to perform miracles through us. And think about the 144,000, how it says in the scripture that we will embody superhuman abilities. Yesterday in a Q&A, someone asked me, well, how do we activate our superpowers? Well, it's not something we have to worry about. What we work on is coming into our deepest level of innocence, emptiness, surrender, trust, union with God. And when that happens, you know, God will be able to incarnate into our bodies in greater and greater levels. And that can be a scary process. That is why we avoid this work, right? We, we don't want to accept or receive just how powerful we can become, probably because in past lives, you know, we know how coveted our DNA and our powers can be and also how hard these beings try to literally exterminate us all. But at the end of the day, 
this frequency right here is how we're going to be able to make it all happen. And it's such a profound, it's the most profound work we can do. I know it doesn't sound as exciting as, you know, <laughs> the New Age Galactic Federation stuff. But I mean, this is the juice right here. This is the sauce. This is what they're trying to hide from you. And they overstimulate your nervous system so you can't find it. So I really hope to see you guys next weekend so we can spend the weekend together expanding on divine union and embodying these codes. Shane's going to be part of that event. He's going to be facilitating a solarization workshop. And so I can't wait to hang out with you guys uh, at that event. Um, the link is earthstart.academy slash 14424. And um, the link is also in the description. So I'm just going to go through some questions here. So Riva says, do you think that true twins run? So I did talk about this already. I said in a true twin, there's no runner and there's no chaser. Okay, that is a crazy insert. <laughs> That is basically what loops you and that's what hooks you and loops you in a delusional false twin experience. Oh, <laughs> I guess I answered the question as you, because I didn't have the chat um, active um, when I was sharing. So just going through here. So I think White Swan was saying there's feels like confusion in the field around um, around time capsules and false twins and false twin program signs like runner and chaser. So when you're in a time capsule relationship, right? There is love in the relationship. There is stability in the relationship. There is devotion. There's peace. There's kindness. Like I'm saying, the, the partner. So even though only one of you is consciously working on ascension, Christed qualities are embedded within the other person. Right? So just because they're not using the words of Christ or divine love or being of service, ultimately they live in those energies. They're just a kind person. So at some point they will have an activation where their awareness will switch on and they will begin to understand this higher octave of this. Um, but you know, these, they usually in those cases, like they're willing to take care of themselves, right? They're willing to eat healthy. They're willing to take a look at some of the things that are happening in the world. They're just, they're not just completely oblivious to everything because their DNA ultimately is firing, is just not firing in the same way that yours might be. I hope that clarifies. So RK says, how do you deal with really strong manipulation in the heart? Like I still get pulled into this person and I feel it in the heart which is really scary. So like I was saying earlier, developing your inner union with God, like if God filled up your whole heart and then God filled up your whole aura, there's nothing in this world that can manipulate or hijack you. Like you can usually tell where a person is by how they talk about psychic attacks. Like if they're still able to be influenced in a way they're, where they're not in their full sovereign space, right? Um, then, um, whew, uh, you know that that's just something that, you know, that's a place that you need to work on. Like you can't skip steps. The union happens inside of our own body. And when we try to skip steps, that's when the false twins occur. Okay. So if you feel like you're still being manipulated, just say, thank you for this training. 
thank you for trying to manipulate me so I can see where I'm at and I'm going to work, heal myself. And this is the entirety of what we offer at the Earth Star Academy. We do ego training, emotional body healing, inner child healing, multidimensional healing. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of modules that go through a process because we have to seal ourselves off in every dimension and fill ourselves up with only the truest vibrations of true love and our own soul's essence. And then we can talk about a twin, right? So um, could an alien love by manipulation convince you a real twin is not actually a twin? Um, so yes and no, like I can see that happening. But again, if you were in a place internally where you were ready to be in a twin union, then you wouldn't be manipulatable. <laughs> Okay, so if you are still worried that you might be manipulated, then you're not even ready to be in a twin union. So go back to working on yourself, right? Craziest thing is that when you are in your own inner union, nothing can manipulate you and nothing can stop the external union from happening. But when we focus on the external before we're ready and fully collapse and doing our work on the inside, that's when any all sorts of manipulation can happen. Okay, so I hope that it helps. This false can be coveting energy, right? Exactly. It is, uh, it is an energy parasite. Because the only desire you should, uh, the only desire a true twin has is to be in union with God. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. And it's like, if you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound very exciting. Why would I want to be in union with God? Then you're not actually on a true twin path yet. Your heart hasn't awakened to its truest state of being in union. And you have to work on healing the God wound coming back into union with source with inside of yourself. That's what divine union is. So if you desire to be in union with a person, but you don't feel that same desire to be in union within yourself, then you know that that's not a true desire for the true twin path. And you know, you're going to end up in a false twin situation from that. Um, okay. Most people already know their twin flame or soulmate. That's not true. Because um, again, well, what I say is most people aren't interested in being in union with God inside of themselves. Right? Nobody really longs to be in union with God and to be in union with themselves like, that's not a desire that's taught to you, you know? We're taught to want drugs, sex, and alcohol. And so, so um, I guess for me, I was just born with this, it's like a moth to flame. And this is something that you have to awaken inside of your heart. This is, it's like, for me, when I look around the new age world, they're like spirituality. I'm like, isn't this the only spirituality really? Like, your internal union with all that is like, that's like spirituality. Um, uh, Samuel says, do you teach people or offer coaching to help others connect with God? So that's not what I market myself as what we do, but the most common feedback that I get from my work is that people feel closer to God within themselves. So within the Earth Star Academy curriculum, I don't say that that's what we do because it's the same thing that Azik is saying. If I marketed like that, nobody would join my school. <laughs> so in all of my classes, people end up finding what they didn't know they even wanted. So long story short, yes, I do facilitate a space where people can experience that. And, you know, I'm not doing it. I I have it's it's just infectious, right? It's like contagious. That's what people say. Like this is just who I am. This is just how I feel most of the time. And when people hang out in my space, they begin to feel it too. So 
This is what we're here to do, all of us together. It's not about us, you know, being saviors or being messiahs. It's just about us feeling this love for God so much inside of us that it just reminds people. It just, people hang out around us long enough, they start feeling it too. <laughs> so, um, Dami says, difference between a twin and a high-level soulmate? Great question. So I would say a high-level soulmate is someone that you feel so much profound love with. I feel like my ex, my most recent ex, would be like a high-level soulmate because we just had such a peaceful life. I mean, there was no reason for me to have left that marriage besides the fact that it wasn't really aligned with my purpose right? We were just in a domestic bliss bubble. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, but there's no velocity, right? There's no direction, let's say. When Shane and I come together, it feels like this super quantum battery that activates and we're like a free energy device that's generating a 50-year timeline for heaven on earth. So that's, I think, the primary difference. Okay, so I hope that this transmission was helpful and enjoyable for you guys. Um, I hope that, you know, you go away feeling just more peace in your body and in a deeper desire to know this love that is so profound because this love is what's needed. This love is literally the way. It's the solution. It's the medicine. It's, it's the resolution for every single thing on this earth. And that is, but it's so hard to articulate. It's so hard to make material, right? But this is the most important thing. This is the most vital activation, the most vital. It's like, if you were, if you were to say, like, what is your mission? Well, I would say my mission is to return the love of God to my humanity. And that is just so hard to sell. <laughs> I mean, it's like, how do you, which is, you know, a, a great um, business coach once told me, sell them what they want, give them what they need, right? Because usually people don't want to, you know, they don't want to pay money to do the work and to heal their pain. And, you know, you got to sell it to them in a way that they're you know, like, that's why the new age is so successful, right? The new age is selling you guys this glitter and this love and light and, but it's, it's junk food, right? But we don't know that what we truly want is to be in union with God and to just feel eternal love in our heart and our body. We don't know that that's what we want because we haven't experienced it yet. So somebody says, so if Shane left and ghosted you tomorrow, what would you feel? So, I mean, this is a great theor theoretical question, but I'm going to say to that is that if you were in a true twin union and that happened, you would still be just eternally in union with God's love inside of yourself. So I guess that's the thing with true divine union is that nothing takes you away from that. And that's why it's so important. You know, one of my favorite songs these days is this Christian song. It talks about when the ocean rises, my heart will eternally be with your embrace. And it talks about how no matter what we go through in life, there is this source of love, a source of peace that is eternal. And so God will never up and ghost you. And so this is just another one of those things where it's like, okay, my, my newborn baby died, right? And the reality grabbed me and took me into source and God enveloped me in eternal love and peace. I didn't sleep for three days. And even in those situations, I'm choosing to be in union with God. It's just a training. It's an initiation because shit's going to hit the fan sometimes. And 
crazy things might happen. But then those are the moments when you really know who you really are and if you're truly in union or not. So, yeah, I, I'm sending out prayers of peace and love. The song is called Oceans. It's really beautiful. Um, Shri says, at this point, I don't care if it's him or not. Good. You shouldn't ever care about it. It's someone because it's you. It's you and God. It's you and God. And that opens up the space for God to create miracles and, and give you situations that leave you in awe, right? And I think a lot of the times it's just a waste of time. We just are seeking that external love so much. Oracle I says, it's hard to function here without my mate. It's hard to function here without God. Is hard to function on earth without God. It's hard to live in this world without being absolutely enveloped by this eternal, unfathomable ocean of love. But when you have that, it's not hard to be here without anyone. <laughs> Okay, and that sounds kind of cold. I don't mean it like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and I think this is, you know, remember in the beginning of the call today, I was telling you guys about how we have to create space for God to be there, right? Because we are like, oh, God, does God love me? Like, where is God? Well, how much time in your day are you creating just to sit there in stillness and be with God? Right? Do you just, like, when, when I wake up in the morning is the first thing, I, cr I just go into that stillness and I say, this day is, I I'm living this day for this love. I'm living this day for, for God. And so when you create a space for God, God will meet you 100% of the time. This is something that we've been talking about lately is that when you create space for God to enter, for divine, for divinity, for sanctity, for holiness, for peace, when you create peace in space for peace in life, that peace will enter in your life 100% of the time, except the pain, the trauma, the, the insecurity, the immaturity in our bodies. It has a hard time with peace because it's going to have to face all the stuff that's inside of ourselves. So we distract ourselves and then we say, Oh, you know, does God even love me? I don't know. God is like this mysterious thing, <laughs> but really we just have to schedule it. You know, every day at this time, I'm just going to clear out my whole room Without human connection, touch, feeling, soulful embrace with enveloped in the skin and another. I love that experience. It's a beautiful experience. And that could easily be like an unfulfilled need from an inner child that needs to be healed. Because, you know, honestly, <laughs> we're talking about like, we're talking about like avatar embodiment here, right? We're talking about like superpowers. Like, we're talking about a level of union with creation where you're not even just yourself anymore. Right? And so when we have that unfulfilled biological need to be touched, that will that's a that's a base human desire. And when we, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just commun saying talkings. I'm not saying this is like the absolute truth. I'm just communicating like this is what I feel is that there is a place where you are just so in union with everything where there's no lack at all inside of you. There's no lack. It's all full. It's full. It's so full of love, so full of peace that you can just sit there forever. <laughs> so 
So Okay. Um, so I do need to go now because I have a Q&A call coming up in nine minutes inside of the Earth Star Academy. I am so happy and excited to um, be here with all of you guys. I love you so much. So, um, Uh, Khan says, does being with God teach us how to face and heal those emotions? Absolutely, right? You just allow that love to actually flow into your body and that love will heal and correct and restore everything in its path. And um, I also have a 300 module foundations level curriculum that prepares your human self for ascension inside of the Earth Star Academy. So you can find the links in the description, earthstar.academy. Okay, so... Love you guys so much. Uh, come to my event next weekend for Twin Union, four days, earthstar.academy slash 14424. It's time to awaken our avatar selves and walk that self into our body and be the impenetrable, unstoppable forces of divine love that we were created to be. So that's the mission that I'm on. And I'm so honored to support you on that very same mission as well. I love you guys so much. Bye for now.